You may have heard the expression, every day is a school day, which is another version of the old phrase, you learn something new every day. The other week, I learned that the word gentacular is to do with breakfast. I haven't put it in a sentence yet, but someone who did said, I took a post gentacular walk to settle my stomach. So that's something you could do. Having typed this introductory paragraph out, I wondered how on earth it had any relevance whatsoever to what I was about to say. That is, after all, the whole purpose of an introduction. It then came back to me just in time before I deleted these words and started again. If every day is a school day, here's a maths problem for you. You go to a prayer meeting at your home church every week for 20 years. How many prayer meetings will you have been to? Let's make it easier by saying you have a fortnight's holiday every year. So how many prayer meetings did you attend? If I was to then ask, what can you remember about anything that was said in any of these prayer meetings? It would seem to imply that you can't remember much. Although to bring in a gentacular reference, you can't remember what you had for breakfast every day for the last 20 years, but you know it's done you good. I can, however, remember something that was said at the prayer meeting at church in the autumn. None of you were there. It was a meeting of church leaders from across the city and county. And someone said that this church was a city on a hill. And that stuck with me ever since. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This was a message to his disciples then. And 2,000 years on, on a hill far away, it's a message to us too. At Goodwood, we are the church on a hill, and our remit is to let our light shine. So how can we do that? Over the next few minutes, we're going to look at three things we need if we're going to let our light shine to those around us. Power, presence and peace. So let's take the first of those. Power. We need power. This church, building that is, has power. All mod cons here. We have our new lights in our new ceiling and it's all good. But if I was to walk in in the dead of night, which I've got no plans to, but if I was, what would be the first thing I would do? Turn on the lights. It would be a bit silly not to because the work has already been done to put them in. This church, people that is, has power. We have a new heart and the power of the Holy Spirit with which to serve the Lord. In this dark world, with this power at our disposal, we need to use that power that's already there. These words of Jesus were part of his Sermon on the Mount. In the Gospel according to Hollywood, there were huge crowds listening, and the crowds are mentioned by Matthew, but these words are to Jesus' disciples. They are the light of the world. They are to let their good deeds shine. It is their good deeds that Jesus is encouraging. And as modern disciples, if we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, listening to this, then we are to go and do likewise. But without the power of God within us, our light will be feeble and ineffective. Yes, that power is there, but we need to switch it on 
in order that others may see and go on doing so in order to use it. As I was preparing this, the first grey skies of another cheerless January day were emerging, but it was still pretty dark. I needed the light on. It would have been no good saying I turned the light on last week because I needed power there and then to locate my coffee. Last week, we may have prayed for the Holy Spirit within us, but it's a prayer we need to keep on praying. It's all there, but we need to ask the Lord for fresh power to serve him every day. We have the power. Let's use what or who the Lord has given us to serve him and make a difference to others. Paul prayed for the Ephesians that their hearts would be enlightened, lit up, in order, and I quote, that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. What a wonderful prayer to pray for each other. Bless them or give them a good day is a good start, but this is something special. Maybe there's someone you could pray this prayer for this week. Because God's power can't be compared to anything else. And he wants each of us to know it more and more. To let our light shine with the power he gives us. Back in the midst of time, there was an old song. You may remember, more love, more power, more of you in my life. It's a good aim. For each day of our lives that the Lord gives us as individuals and as a church. As a fellowship, we are the light in this part of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We need the power of the spirit, a fresh anointing. To let our light shine that others may see our good deeds and glorify our father in heaven. Secondly, we need presence. We need to be out there in the world, in the right place at God's time. Just as a house can have power, but will be in the dark if there are no light bulbs in the fittings. So we need to be lights that are where we need them to be in order that we can make a difference. It's no good sitting in a dark room and someone says, do you have power? And you say yes, and you show them the light bulb in your hand. It needs to be in the fitting in order to let the light shine. I know from experience, speaking as DIY dad, that ironic title I was given a few years ago, that if a bulb is not connected to the source of power, then it won't work. The power is there, but if we're not in the right place, our light will not be visible. Now, complete this sentence. The most exciting thing we ever got from B&Q is our Christmas tree. We got it out this year and it was in the words of the hymn writer, weary and worn and sad. A bit like me, really. For a few years now, only half the lights had been working. And so we decided it was about time we got a new set. And I have to say that when they were on the tree, it gave the whole thing a new lease of life. I would invite you round to have a look, but the tree and its lights are in the loft. We won't be letting those lights shine until next Christmas. No one will see them. And anyone driving past would never know they were ever there. We are the lights of the world, but our light is for life, not just for Christmas. We can look good in the festive season, but no one would know we were ever there for the rest of the year. 
We need to be a presence that others notice, shining God's light into the darkness. But in order to do that, we need to be connected to the source of our power, the Lord himself, the creator of all things. One of my favourite Bible verses is 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God displayed in the face of Christ. The same God who said, let the light shine in the darkness can make his light shine in and through us. And if we are a presence where he wants us to be, then we can make a difference in that situation. But in order to be that presence, our connection needs to be secure. We need the energy of the light of the world. To misquote the old song, read your Bible, pray every day if you want to glow. A few weeks ago, I was outside in the evening and the person with me said, Look at the stars. It was a statement I felt of wonder. No one says those stars, they're really annoying, aren't they? They always provoke a positive reaction. The Apostle Paul encouraged the Philippians to shine like stars. But this wasn't a romantic image that he'd created. Like all good preachers, he didn't just say they should do something, but how they should do it. So let's put those words in context. He wrote, do everything without grumbling or arguing. So that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of God. If we want to let our light shine, we need to let our grumbles go. The night before I wrote this, I had a dream. Now, before we go any further, I must stress I'm attaching no significance to this dream whatsoever, apart from the fact it made me smile, which is no mean feat in itself. In the dream, we were all here in the church. It was packed out and there was a troupe of dancers and a rock band playing. We built this city. I was sitting there thinking, I don't think this will go down very well. But then someone said, I can't believe we've got five songs today. I tried to encourage them by saying maybe they were short ones. I'm not sure which version of We Built This City it was, but we did have sausage rolls at church the day before. What was surprising in the dream was that the complaint was not what I was expecting in the circumstances. As I say, I'm not claiming any deeper meaning here, but coming back to the passage, which would seem like a good idea, as a city on a hill that cannot be hidden, what are we building it on? We build this city on Jesus Christ, light of the world. And if he can make light shine out of darkness at the dawn of time and shine his light into our hearts in the present, and he can help us to let our light shine to those around us in the future. All he asks is that we stay connected to him so that we can reach out effectively. And so we've seen that to let our light shine, we need power, we need presence, and thirdly and finally, we need peace. If you ever try to light a candle outside or get a barbecue going on a windy day, you will know that it can take a while. If it's really windy, it can be well nigh impossible. In order to let our light shine, we need the peace of God in our own hearts, that the storms of life don't extinguish the flame 
that can sometimes flicker in our lives. Lighthouses have lots of good things about them. People look at them. They walk around them. They may even go in them. But lighthouses were built to save lives. That's why they were put there. As I say, a person with a candle on a beach in a stormy night is not going to lead anyone to safety. Their light would need to be bigger, brighter, visible from all sides and protected from the elements. We're living in rough conditions. Within a mile of this church are hundreds, if not thousands of people, some of whose lives are storms they are struggling with. We can be a lighthouse for our community, a city built on Jesus Christ and shining out into the darkness. But in order to, for our light to shine effectively, we need peace, both within ourselves and with one another. We can't save lives, but we can share our saviour with others, shining his light, doing our good deeds for others to see, that they may too glorify our Father in heaven. So what makes a good lighthouse? I went on the website of the Lighthouse Preservation Society, as you do. This has everything you know, wanted to know about lighthouses, but were afraid to ask. I went on some other websites too, but it was getting a bit sciencey, so I came up with this acronym, LFT, which as we all know stands for, not this time it doesn't. Today it stands for location, foundation, and transmission. For a lighthouse to be effective, it needs to be in the right location. It needs to be in the right place. There's no point building a lighthouse in Leicester because we don't have any sea. But we can be a lighthouse, let our light shine, visible to all, built on solid foundations, and hear just what God wants us to be. Foundation. It needs to be able to withstand the storms of life. And finally, a good lighthouse has transmission. Its light needs to be visible to all around it. Well, it may seem like a long time since anything gentacular, but as I finish, can I encourage us to let our light shine as the Lord Jesus did, to make full use of the power at our disposal, to be a presence in our community, and to be a lighthouse that both lives in peace with one another and declare God's peace to those outside. This little light of ours. Let's live with all his power. Let it shine to a world that desperately needs it. Amen.